Right, now we know the outboard works. Um, this is part two. Uh, we're going to be replacing the impropeller uh, for the water pump. And, oh yeah, the gearbox oil on the bottom. We'll uh, take it out and see how, uh, how, how dirty it is. I don't think it's been replaced in a while um, because on the drain plug screw it's been painted over so I suspect it hasn't been done uh, since the casing uh, was painted. But yeah, we'll take it out and see what we got. Is it moving? So there's no oil going to come out of that one, that's just to hold the oh. bottom on. So there's a, there's a split line there. Nice stop it a sec. What is that? That is filthy. What even is it? There's actually grit in there. A actual stones. Yeah, that might be it. Might be it. So there we go. Here's the bottom. That there's the shaft. That one there, I've got my top of my finger on. That's the one that goes into the bottom of the engine. With it. See the splines? And then here, this one here, is the gearbox um, selector cables. So when you move that lever on the side of the engine, um, that pulls up and down doing your gears inside. At the bottom here, this, this is your water pump. Um, the impropeller sits on this shaft here. As, the, as this shaft's always spinning, um, even when it's on neutral. Because remember the gearbox is in the bottom. And that's what pushes the water out. So that looks real filthy and gunky in there. Oh, what's going on? Ugh. Ming in. Alright, let's get this apart and clear it up and we'll have to strip it out and see what we've got. So Harrison's down now just taking the pump house pump housing off. Uh, for whoa. Wind? Yeah, it's flipping windy out there. And rainy. Yeah. Uh, there's four ten mil bolts to take off. Right, this is the uh, last screw we're just taking out, or Harrison's just taken out. Turn around. Go on then, Harrison, lift it off. There we go. Go lift it off right over the top. Quite nice in there. You can see, looks alright in there. Not too shabby, money penny. Do you want to slide the impropeller over the top, Harrison? Yeah, that should come. So that should just oh. lift off. One of the blades looks broken actually on the impropeller. It's coming. Yeah, just slide off over the top. Yeah, there. Worryingly, makes me wonder where that other bit's gone. It certainly wasn't inside the pump housing. Right, we've got the pump housing off and we've slid it up the shaft. Um, what it has shown is what looks to be like real crystallised salt crystals in here. It's in the end of my finger, a lot of muck. Uh, and that will explain the silicon. Looks like there's a crack there. Possibly. That's maybe where the water's coming in. And we've also got a slight crack here on the front. I think that's just more cosmetic, not structural. But that's something. Uh, probably deal with over the winter. A 
we'll do is we'll get this cleaned up. And then we'll go from there, I think. You can see all the oil, uh, gearbox oil. It does look pretty clean actually, but we make sure it's not contaminated. Right, we've done actually quite a lot. Um, I've had the camera off, um, so I spent more time thinking and looking rather than um, anything else. Right, as I said previously, we've we've got a bit of damage here. Um, we've also got you see a slight crack there, and if you spin it round slightly cracked inside there and there's tiny 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 crack just in there so it kind of is around where these threads have got a bit of damage around here um, as well when we took the bottom drain plug out um, the oil didn't look too bad actually um, it didn't like it was contaminated with seawater or anything, so it still keeps a good seal. Um, I think this is something to keep an eye on. Um, I don't think this has been stripped down. We've rubbed it down with emery cloth. Uh, we filled this up twice with brake cleaner and clutch cleaner, you know, that stuff that evaporates. We've swilled it out twice. Um, it is in a bit of a sorry state. I think what's happened is it hasn't maybe had an anode on it, a sacrificial anode, and it's been kept maybe uh, in the sea down. And um, the sea has worked worked its wonders with it. So I think we'll continue using it, but it's something just to keep an eye on. Um, People have a look on eBay to see if there's anything, any of them being broken, which are in better condition. There is one on there at the moment for fifty pound, but I don't. It's the other model. I think it's the slightly newer one outboard uh, to this one. But we'll keep looking. But we use this one for the time being. Put some fresh oil in it. The engine in it seems really nice. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. Luckily, when I was explaining those, those slight cracks to you earlier, um, they're not structural. Um, they're only the, those four bolts are only for holding the um, water pump on. Uh, that hole there and that hole there is the ones that clamp the bottom to the bottom, you know, to the other bit. So they are just holding the impeller. Luckily, so yeah. It's going to uh, pull back together again and uh, go on to the next bit. There we go. On there? Yep, that's on there. So that's the impropeller back on. There we go. You've got to kind of wiggle it. you got to get, then get the blades. Hmm. Do you want to hold it? Yes, please. Okay. So these are the bolts we've got to be careful with because the, where we're screwing into, the okay. cast is a bit, the casting's a bit moody. Yeah. Okay. We do opposite. So we've re in. Um, We've put everything back together again. It's all been kind of cleaned up as best it can be. As you can see there, we've got new gearbox oil in. You see how moody it is around here. But it's just, I think it's just surface corrosion. So, what we've got here, like I said before, this is the gear, this is the drive shaft. And we've currently got it in neutral. So what we'll do is we'll put the lever on the outboard, which is this one here. 
in the upright position which is neutral and then this bolt in here connects onto this on like a clamp and the idea is, do you want to move that handle Harrison? back and see. forth, yep you see how it moves ah, that's it, see it's as simple as that, that's it, in neutral top dead, top dead centre, that's it and then we'll just uh, connect her on well, I think that's it spinning in um, neutral in reverse sorry in reverse and then in forward seems good right so we're preparing the wheelie bin to put the motor on it and we're going to do a little test there it is filling up a couple minutes time, the engine will be sitting on there. We're gonna try it out. So yeah. Just another quick update, we've got the motor on there. It is almost about there. It's just up to there. So yeah. See you when it's I'll see you when the water is there. Bye! I've um, appeared to hit another snag. Um, <laughs> after running it in the dustbin, um, it ran really well, water was coming out, and then after a couple of minutes, I'd say after five minutes, it stopped coming out. And I had steam coming out rather than water. Um, I suspect, I don't know this, I'm still fault finding. Um, in the top of the power head, um, it might be clogged with um, salt and debris, and it's blocked um, the waterways possibly, and it's jamming um, the water feed coming out. I've double checked the water pump on the bottom; all seems well, fine. The in propeller is not slipping on the shaft. That's all all right. Um, so what I have to do is take the fuel tank off, take the head off. Uh, check the waterway. So this is something I've not done before, so we'll see. Harrison's still getting uh, ready. He's been a bit of a lazy crack. <laughs> the clock's changed last night, so we get an extra hour in bed. So yeah, let's get this off and see what we got. It is pretty mucky. You can see that. Right, I've just come outside because the lighting's better. As you can see all that, all that grit in there. Just like half of uh, Brighton Beach in there. All that grit. And that was with running it in the bucket yesterday. Well, that's sand. You see all this? I ain't surprised the little um, the little waterways are blocked up at the bottom. So what I might do is just flush the hose pipe in there and just kind of maybe flush it out. Kind of back flush it. Put the hose pipe underneath kind of force water out this way and then maybe kind of force the water up and out. What I don't want to do is then go flushing any of this stuff really back down the pipe. Um, well, good heavens. There we go. 
So we've given it a good soak with some um, a, a very aggressive cleaner. Um, I'm just going to hose it down. I'm going to hose it, shove the hose pipe up the water intake to try and flush any water and grit out here. I don't want to jet water in there and then potentially clog up the little copper pipe coming uh, up, up the shaft. So, I also gave around here a spray as well. Right, I've got the pipe as far as a bit will go up that water pipe. So I'm just going to turn it on and hopefully we'll see water uh, coming out the head. Grit came out there. You can see the grit down there. Not too close, Harrison. It might not micro. See all the grit. You can see it bubbling in that corner there. There it is. How oh, that? Coming out of there. Before we put the cover back on, Harrison's just, um, just giving that a gentle, the machine face, a gentle uh, rub down. So yeah, when we put the pipe in the bottom, water came out the head. When we put the pipe on the bottom, underneath the chassis here, water came out of this hole here, down here. But when I put my finger over it, water didn't come out of the head. And what you've got is, that hole at the bottom is kind of completely sealed. It's almost like it's meant to be like a flushing hole, possibly. Anyway, we'll get this back on and get her in the wheelie bin. Right, we're running it without the, um, the cap on the back of the engine. As you can see, with the pump running, the engine running, there's water, there's water leaking out. So it's definitely pumping water up to the engine. The issue we have is in between this filling up with water and then it leaking out the bottom so it's almost like there's a blockage between this head, this section and where it comes out the bottom. Right, a bit of an update. Um, sorry, I just had some uh, cashew nuts. <laughs> I spent more time doing um, and thinking uh, rather than filming. Um, so what's happened is uh, the water comes up through the bottom we've discovered it comes out of here and then any air inside the cylinder head in the power head then gets pushed up to a hole in there. Sorry about the spotlight. And then it looks like it comes then out of this hole which is extremely salted up um, and then goes through this uh, thermostat, which as you can see, that's a better light isn't it, as you can see this thermostat is well and truly ganked. <laughs> it's actually so full up of salt and crud, it's stuck in the open position. It then gets around these passages which let me just show you here it goes around here so that sits like that and inside there is actually the, the cylinder head you see it inside there and that plate then goes on top which is again really crudded up really cried it up. And there's actually, when I first took it off, there was a lump of silicon in there. And in here is the plate it then goes on top of. 
This has been out for a few days. I got took it off last night, so it's dried out. But you can see it's just really flaky and horrible. So, but what I have noticed inside the bottom of that hole, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. So I'm going to try and clear up the air waterways in here and clean that cover off. Um, and hopefully uh, that resolves it and you know inside here I'll try and clear up as best I can. So yeah that's where we are with it at the moment. Um, it's now Monday and I've got to get this fixed by uh, Wednesday uh, evening because we go down to Timmouth on the Thursday where I am hoping to use it. Right that's the update at the moment. This is some of the stuff that's coming out. It's just Real thick, real thick salt. That this is why, ladies, we look after our outboards and clean them out. Right here is what came out that little hole. Um, crazy, eh? No wonder the water's not getting through and clearing up. I mean that is just outrageous. <laughs> Crazy. Right, I've um I've, uh, I've had that sat in vinegar for about an hour and um and you know what? It's come up really well. Um they the salt crystals are rock solid, they really are dig your thumbnail into them and they weren't sh shifting. But after an hour of in vinegar it really does do wonders. Um, and this has come up pretty clean. Um, there's a bit of scary stuff on there but I'm not going to worry about it. So at least this engine's worries. So I think I'm going to reassemble it and get it back in the wheelie bin and then um, see if it starts pumping water. What I also have done has been spraying vinegar in there occasionally um, and kind of like we get to know where the holes go <laughs> by spraying vinegar up here say it comes out of here and you spray vinegar down at the bottom left corner then it kind of comes out this hole here so yeah you start to learn the waterway so and by shining a torch in there um, you kind of see it looks relatively clear so fingers crossed um, the main blockage was the on the um, thermostat inlet um, where I had it, you know, in my hand. Um, but all this I've kind of cleared out, um, giving it a scrape. So hopefully that's that was enough. I had this covered up with a tissue, by the way, so to prevent the vinegar and that going in here. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's how we go for the uh, when we reassemble it and get it in the wheelie bin. <laughs> well, would you believe it? I've got it all back together again, uh, all the ignition um, put back on the cool pack, the fuel tank, all the covers. As you can see here, I am actually missing one bolt on the side of this water case, but there's about eight on there already, so hopefully that one that's missing isn't going to cause me a problem. Um, uh, the fuel is all connected back, the fuel is all connected back up casing on the back on the power head is back on so it's all done so let's get it around in the wheelie bin put some fresh fuel in it um, I think the fuel actually leaked out of it it must have been at a funny angle and the fuel tank actually drained out not good but uh, anyway let's get it fired up and hopefully that water is jetting at the bottom you got your fingers crossed because I sure have with my toes. Well, <laughs> at long last, um, it's in the bin. <laughs> what a carry on I've had. Um, it wouldn't start. Uh, maybe some of that vinegar got inside the engine, because I could see, you know, inside the piston there. Um, anyway, it's ticking over currently lovely in the bucket. Lots of water coming out. So one thing I'll do, leave it for a bit, 
it's really quiet actually, yeah, it's not too late. And then I think tomorrow we'll give it a good run out after work, I'll give it a good run out in the uh, wheelie bin. Um, actually I'm on standby tomorrow, so it might be Wednesday, Wednesday evening. Shall we go and have a look? It's just purring away. Oodles of water coming out. Oodles of it. Yes, yeah, so hopefully it was just, like I said, all those pipes were just clogged up inside. So, yes, um, if I don't have any problems, this will be the end of the video uh, of part two. But brilliant. Thanks for watching.